Why should one student have to pay for another? Uh, well, this isn't about one student uh, paying for another. One of the things that we'll be announcing today is that we're going to be aligning the cost of a degree with the contribution that the student and the government makes. So we'll be ensuring that uh, when it comes to the cost, uh, that the contribution both the government and the student makes aligns with that cost. And then the additional step the government is taking is that we are going to put more money in from the, from the Commonwealth Government in those areas where we know there will be skill shortages into the future, where we know there will be jobs demand. Uh, so we incentivise students to study in those areas, teaching, nursing, uh, clinical psychology, uh, IT, engineering, all those areas where we know there will be jobs into the future and we want students to have the skills to be able to take up those jobs. But you've got law and commerce fees that are up 28%, humanities up 113%. I mean, that's a massive disincentive for those students who might want to explore and take up those subjects. Uh, well, no, we, we still want people to do commerce or, or, or do law, but what I would suggest to those people who are what might want to undertake commerce is thinking of, think about doing IT a, as part of your degree because that will help your employability at the end of your, your degree. So this is all done at, at the unit level and we want students to be thinking about how can we ensure that we've got the skills so that we can get a job at the end of our degree? And we need that. We're about to face the biggest economic disruption since the Great Depression. We have to make sure that our young people have the skills in the areas where we know the jobs will be as we come out of this coronavirus pandemic and the economic shock that it's, that it's hit our nation with. It's absolutely vital and that is why we want the focus being on those skills. But what if you, if you want to follow commerce and you're not interested in IT or, or you're not interested in some of those sectors where prices will be reduced? Do you just got to cop it? Uh, well, if you're a current student, you're grandfathered. Uh, if, you're, if you're starting next year, uh, then what you'll be able to know is that uh, your contribution and the government contribution equals the cost of that degree, that, that the cost of your degree is below similar, similar costs in countries like the US or, or the United Kingdom, uh, and that the government is providing through the fee help loan the very best loan scheme in the world and you don't start paying back a cent of the cost of your, your degree until you start earning more than $46,000. So uh, you are still, um, obviously, if you want to go down that commerce path and not do any of those um, other subjects in those other areas, uh, what we're offering you is still the best fee help loan scheme in the world and a degree cost which is below comparative countries like the UK and the US. Well, Minister, you hold a Bachelor of Arts. How would you feel about having to pay a whole lot more? Uh, well, uh, one of the things that I, when I look back is I, I wish that I, I had have done a language um, through my arts degree. Uh, I, I think that would have really helped my employability because in the end I um, was a graduate at the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, but the fact that I went and worked overseas uh, in a in a country I went and worked in Denmark helped me, but if I had have had a language, it, it would have really supported my entry into the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. So uh, I, I actually think my experience is an example of why uh, we're very keen to encourage people to get the skills that we're going to need for the jobs for the future. Well, the problem you're going to have, though, is you've got those unemployment figures, those horrendous unemployment figures that dropped yesterday. You've got 16% youth unemployment. You've got more people ye leaving Year 12 now, and the prospect of finding a job is going to be more and more difficult. So how on earth do you expect them to be able to pay for it? Uh, so we want them to be able to get jobs. And if they can get jobs, they'll be able to pay for it. And that's why we want them getting the skills in the areas that where we know the jobs will be. It's incredibly important that we skill our young people 
to be able to grow the jobs that we're going to need as we come out of this, as, as we restore our economy to, to where it was and, and make it even stronger. And that is what this is all about. This is about jobs. This is about getting our young people with the skills that they'll need to take those jobs on because mm. that, is, that is going to determine how we respond to this coronavirus pandemic and the economic shock that it's had on this nation. And if they can't find a job? Well, we're going to uh, obviously there's higher education, there's vocational education. One of the things I'll be saying today is we need to make sure that the, the calibration between vocational and higher education is better in, in this nation because one of the other things that we're going to see, the jobs of the future are going to require you to have some higher education skills, some vocational education skills. So we've got to make sure that our, our whole tertiary sector is working for young Australians and also we've got to reopen our economy, obviously in a safe COVID-19 way, so we can also offer young Australians uh, jobs so they, they are the ones who take up those casual jobs as well. So the sooner we can get our economy reopened as well, the better for young people. You're also um, increasing places uh, by some 100,000 over the next 10 years. But isn't it true that back in 2017, your government announced a plan, a 10-year plan, to cut places by 200,000? So aren't you still behind? Uh, no, we've, um, over the, the last few years, put record funding in, into higher education. Now, none of us saw, uh, obviously, the coronavirus pandemic hitting like it, it has. That's why we responded so quickly with the short course offering, uh, which I announced on Easter Sunday. Now, what we've seen there is we've got 50 higher education providers offering 350 courses in these same areas of national priorities. And we think um, approximately 20,000 students have already taken up those short courses. So we want to continue to respond in that way to meet the demand that we're going to see come onto our higher education system. And I want to continue to work with business and industry and with the higher education sector to make sure we're delivering those skills that will be needed into the future.